So, ranging from that queen that kills her lovers after their first night together, to the one who gave herself up for sacrifice to save her people, African women are actually done thrilling and exciting things that are not even written in most history books. So, I said, mm -mm. I have to bring their stories to story lovers and story lovers only. In 1617, the Portuguese established a settlement and slave camp in Luanda, but were faced with hostilities from the locals, so they invited their king, Mbade, to a peace conference. Mbade sent his sister, called Nziga, to represent him. When Nziga got to the meeting, there was only a chair in the room and is the chair of the Portuguese master. Seeing this as a sort of inequality with him, she used one of her servants as a chair to equal the Portuguese master. In the meetings, she realized that injuring the Portuguese from trading slaves would stop their major source of guns and a possible ally. However, when the Portuguese demand for slaves became too much, his brother, who was the king, was worried that he committed suicide. Unziga ascended the throne, and in the following year of her reign, she formed alliance with her former African enemies and later on the Dutch, waging a 30-year war against the Portuguese even after the Dutch had left. After leading what is called a 20th century completely successful armed resistance against the Portuguese till her old age, she died peacefully in her 80s. Okay, let's talk about Queen Amina. Queen Amina of Zaza was the first child of King Bakwa. When she was a child, she had a keen interest in the military that she trained with the warriors of Zazao and she emerged the head of Zazao's cavalry when she grew up. At 16, she had become a beautiful lady that men and kings offered to be given her 10 slaves per day if she married them. Amina turned all of them down and refused to marry. After the death of her father and brother, she became the queen warrior. She fought many wars to open a trade route for her people who traded in gold, slaves, and new crops, bringing wealth and power to her kingdom. She expanded her kingdom southwards, close to River Ninja. Rumors added that, during her war campaign, she had lovers in each of her captured city. After each battle and after they had spent the night together, she would have her lover killed in the morning. When this rumor reached an Arabian prince, he crossed the desert to be with her and they had the night together. While she slept, the Arabian prince quickly fled into the desert and when Amina got up in the morning to see that the man who had seen her nakedness had escaped, she became depressed, knowing that he will live to boast about it, being the first man to ever live and tell the story. She soon committed suicide when it became a public discussion. There's another account of her dying during a military campaign in Atagara. According to the legends of the Ashante, the golden stool is a sacred tool that descended from heaven to the lap of the first Ashante king and it housed the spirit of the living, dead and yet to be dead. Well, whether it's a myth or not, when the British colonialists came to Gold Coast, they sent the Ashante king Prempi I to exile in Seychelles and demanded that the British Governor General Frederick sit on the sacred golden stool to further instill his authority as the governor of the Gold Coast. A meeting of the elders were held where they were discussing that they would not fight. Ya Ashantewa, who was the queen mother of the Ashanti tribe, got angry and told them that if the men would not fight, he would gather the women and defend the golden stool. She led the war against the British government and though she was later captured and exiled, she was able to preserve the sanctity of the Golden Stool. In 1921, an assurance of non-interference with the Golden Stool was then given by the British and it was brought out of hiding. In the old Bini tradition, immediately a king is crowned, his mother will be killed because they are considered to be now dangerous to him. Queen Idia, more of a witch than a human, as some sweet-mouthed historian would claim, was the wife of a famous and powerful Benin king called Uzulua. He had two wives, of which they both gave birth to a son on the same day. Idia gave birth to Isigi, and the other son from the other wife is called Aruan. 
However, maybe Arunran has been eating too much or blew some air into himself. Isi tells us that he grew into a giant. He is also the first son. When King Ozolua went the ways of his ancestors, a great conflict ensued between Queen Idea, Esigi, and Arunran as to who becomes the king. Queen Idea had ignored the fact that she would be killed as soon as his son became the king. When the fight became physical, each of the brothers commanded a small army that can quell any domestic uprising. But with the help of Idia, who mobilized and led the king's army, he defeated Arunwa and helped Izigi become the sixteenth king of Bini. But meanwhile, the tradition was still there. A gallantry won't save her. So her son hid her in a groove for some time, till she was able to turn the tradition in exchange for the fact that they will never meet face to face again. Till today, it is still a taboo for a Bene king and his mother to see each other. Alright, so who is Lukume Kalota? At age 10, Kalota was kidnapped from the West Africa of the Yoruba, transported to Cuba where she worked at a place called Triumvirato Sugar Plantation. Lukumi and many other slaves on the plantation who are mostly men suffered harsh conditions and brutal treatment by the Spanish slave owners. In 1843, Lukumi and another slave woman called Flamina began to plot a rebellion among the slaves against the slave masters. Flamina was caught while she was distributing the information and imprisoned. Lukumi continued plotting the plan and later carried out the raid along with some other tribal leaders. On the 3rd of November 1843, arming the slaves with machete, she freed Flamina and other prisoners, burned the torturing house down, killed the overseer's daughter while the plantation owner flee. They went to other plantations, killing the slave masters and burning down the plantations. After raiding five plantations, Lukumi and Flamina were captured and killed. After finding their bodies, the slaves become more furious and promise to fight till they are totally free, but the Spanish gun wielding army overpowered them and ended the rebellion. African heroines are numerous. If it happens that you guys find this interesting, I will make more videos about female heroes, telling you about the African woman that went naked in order to expose the secrets of the gods. Also, the story of that one-eyed queen that fought tooth and nail against the Romans used Caesar's head as footmat and was never defeated. Please and please do not forget to leave a like and subscribe if you've not.